walking sticks are used to decrease the amount of body weight taken through a lower limb during walking and hence patient can compensate for muscle weakness and relief pain walking stick increases the stability and confidence of the patient these are not stable as elbow crutches but are lighter and more easily stored the function of stick is to widen the base of support patient are instructed to hold a cane in hand opposite to the affected extremity it widen the base of support with less lateral shifting of the center of gravity than when it is hold on the same side the use of stick is to reduce force acting at the hip is particularly important for the activities like stair climbing and hence the use of stick has important applications for hip disorder like joint replacement or degenerative joint diseases types of walking sticks or cane standard cane standard adjustable cane adjustable aluminum offset cane tripod cane quadrupod cane selection of correct walking stick the sticks are selected on the basis of their ability to improve stability and balance this in turn can be achieved by increasing the base of support by providing additional point of floor contact hence the greatest stability is provided by the broader base cane such as quadrupod cane and least stability by standard cane indications of walking sticks when there is a muscular weakness polymyelitis or nerve injury to lower limb osteoarthritis or fracture to lower limb to improve balance osteoporosis means weak bone limb shortening scoliosis to the blind patient hemianopia means only one side vision either right side or left side cerebral palsy precautions the user's wrist and grip must be strong enough so that he can bear his and stick weight and even heel to gait pattern should be encouraged in case of tripod or quadrupod the edge should not be too close to the patient so that he can lean over it or not too far so that the stick may tilt inward when the weight is taken on it measurement of sticks or cane The patient position should be standing with his hands at his side. The elbow is slightly flexed approximately 20 to 30 degree. Measurement is taken from ulnar styloid to the floor approximately 15 inches from the heel. An inch is then added to the measurement in order to allow for the height of the shoe. Types of cane Standard cane, it is also called as regular or conventional stick and it is mostly used. It is made up of aluminium, wood or plastic. It has half circle C-shaped handpiece. Normally, it is recommended for the elderly patient. Distally, it has got a rubber tip which is at least 1 inch in diameter or may be larger. Advantages, it is inexpensive or least expensive. It can fit easily on the stair or on other surface having limited space. Disadvantage, it is non-adjustable and has to be cut to fit the patient. Standard adjustable aluminium cane. It has got the same design as that of regular or standard cane. It is made up of aluminium tube having C-shaped handpiece covered with plastic. It has adjustable locking pin to adjust the height. It has a distal rubber tip which is at least 1 inch in diameter or maybe even larger. Advantages It is easily adjustable. It is light in weight and can fit easily on stairs. Disadvantages It is more costly than a standard walking stick. Adjustable aluminium offset cane Upper half of the cane is offset anteriorly so that the line of gravity falls on the cane and it gives more stability. It is made up of aluminium tube having plastic or rubber molded grip handle. Distally there is a rubber tip having a diameter of 1 inch or larger. Advantages it has designed in such a way that it provides greater stability. It is easily and quietly adjustable, lightweight and can fit easily on stairs. Disadvantages Its only one disadvantage is that it is costlier than standard or adjustable aluminium stick. Tripod cane A tripod walking stick has got three rubber tips touching the ground at an equilateral triangle. It gives the broader base of support. The hand grip is at right angle lies in the same plane as in line joining both the legs. The height of the hand grip can be adjustable. Quadrupod cane 
it has four rubber tip and it gives more stability than any other canes sometimes the upper portion of the cane is offset anteriorly and grip is adjustable in height this is more useful in the cases like hemiplegia and other elderly patient who have the injury of lower limb advantages of tripod and quadrupod cane this provide a broad base of support this canes are easily adjustable disadvantages as it has a broader base of support it cannot be used in stair climbing quadrupod cane demand slower gait pattern walker can be useful for non weight bearing partial weight bearing and full weight bearing gait pattern it gives more stability as it has the broader base since the center of gravity falls within the base of support it gives anterior as well as lateral stability the walker is having two anterior and two lateral bars the horizontal bar connects all the vertical bars in three sides and one side is kept open the patient is not given walker unless he is not able to walk with any other assistive devices like canes crutches because the gait pattern acquired in walker is different to to change and the patient using walker is usually confident at his home and is unable to manage the stairs however if parallel bars are not available in the department a walker is very useful in initial phase of gait training when the patient is unstable and fear of falling advantages they provide four point of floor contact with a wide base of support and hence provide a high level of stability they provide a sense of security for the patients who are fearful of ambulation they are relatively light in weight and easy to adjust disadvantages this cannot be used in the narrow area and in stair climbing they are difficult to manage through doorways and cars they eliminate normal arm swings measurement for measuring the height of the walker it is placed approximately 6 inches from the lateral border of the toes during measurement two landmarks are used the greater trochanter and the angle of the elbow the top of the walker should be approximately at the level of the greater trochanter and the elbow should be flexed to about 20 to 30 degree this elbow flexion serves two important functions it allows the arm to shorten or lengthen during different phases of the gait it provides a shock absorption mechanism types of the walker rigid walker foldable walker gutter walker rollator reciprocal walker rigid walker it is also known as standard walking frame it consists of four aluminum vertical alloy tubes which are arranged in rectangle and are joined together on three sides by upper and lower horizontal tubes one side of the rectangle is kept open the lower ends of the vertical tubes are fitted with rubber tips the ends are adjustable by mean of a spring hand grips are fitted in the shorter upper horizontal tubes on each side uses it is light rigid stable and easy to use foldable walker this foldable walkers can be easily collapsed to fit in an automobile uses this are particularly useful for the patients who travel it is easy to carry while traveling gutter walker also known as forearm walker the main structure of this walker are same as that of standard walker except the gutter is added in which the patient's forearm rest their function is to allow the transfer of body weight through the forearm to the walker there are vertical handles to lift and to turn the frame the patient's forearm may be secured in the gutters with velcro straps uses of forearm walker or gutter walker this is useful for the patients having arthritis if the patient cannot extend his elbow fully and the patient is unable to take the weight through hand due to weakness or deformity rollator this walker are known as casters this walker are provided with the two small front wheels and two short legs at the back protected by the rubber tip its rear leg are almost vertical under the hand grips while walking the patient has to lift the rear bars of the ground and the wheels moved forward and ends with the rear bar placing on the ground uses This walker are useful as they may allow functional ambulation for the patient who are unable to lift and to move a conventional walker. It may not be recommended for elderly patient because it may move fast if the patient loses his stability. 
Commonly, it is recommended for the children's reciprocal walker. This is designed to allow unilateral forward movement of one side of walker. One side of the walker moved forward with the opposite side of leg followed by it, and the other side of walker with the anterior leg. So, alternatively, each side of the walker moves forward. Uses. The patient's stability is increased as this frame does not have to be lifted to clear the ground with each step. Hence, these walker are useful for the patient who are incapable of lifting the walker with both the hands and moving it forward. Modification of walker baskets. Basket can be attached to the anterior portion of the walker to carry some of the personal items. Sometimes, instead of baskets, plastic or nylon bags may be used. Sitting surface. It can be attached in the interior portion of the walker. Generally, it is foldable inside. It is needed for the patient who has the less endurance. For example, post polio syndrome. Glides. Instead of rubber ferrule, glides is made up of plastic, which is helpful for the patient to drag or side the walker forward in smooth surface. It is useful for the patient who is unable to lift the walker. Wheelchair. The patient who has both the lower limb non-functional or partial functional has to be recommended for the wheelchair. It gives 100% of the stability. Normally, wheelchair is recommended for paraplegic, quadriplegic, spinal cord injury and fracture. Types of the wheelchair, rigid wheelchair, foldable wheelchair, one-arm wheelchair, powered wheelchair, rigid wheelchair. The rigid wheelchairs are having the solid frame. and also it is lighter it is difficult to carry while traveling foldable wheelchair foldable wheelchair contains foldable frame and it is very much heavier it occupies less space so it is very much easy to carry while traveling also one arm wheelchair these are useful for the patient those who are not able to use their one side upper limb mainly in hemiplegia this wheelchair is activated and steered by one upper limb the wheelchair contains two hand rims in one side one controls outer ring the same side of the wheel and the another inner ring controls the opposite side of the wheel if both the rings are simultaneously used the wheelchair propels in the straight line powered wheelchair powered wheelchair are the sophisticated one and are more used in the developed countries like us and uk parts of the wheelchair wheels there are two types of wheels a solid metal wheels metal wheels with spokes In first variety there is no spokes it is totally molded by the metal with some gaps or holes in a flat surface it never loses its shape due to its solid molding second variety is having spokes instead of the molded flat surface it is very much easier to propel forward with this wheelchair the spokes may be broken easily with the minimal forced violence the rim of the wheel may lose its shape if the spokes are broken tires Hard polyurethane tires or pneumatic tires are used in wheelchair. Hard polyurethane with a smooth thread are designed for the indoor use or smooth surface. The pneumatic are air filled tires and are generally used for the outdoor and even surface. It gives more shock absorption and smooth mobility. It needs more energy to propel. Wheel lock Wheel lock or breakers can be helpful for slowing or stopping the movement of the wheelchair. Normally high or low mounted brakes can be used in the wheelchair. High mounted brakes are mainly for limited upper limb activation person. Casters. These are small wheels which are two in number and allowing all direction movement. Hand rim. There are three types of rims. Standard metal rim. It can be used when the patient has no problem of grip. Frictional rim. Frictional rims are the standard rim with the surgical plaster tubing added for the additional grip projection rim it can be used for the patient with the problem of gripping it has number of projection knobs these knobs are perpendicular to the rim only disadvantage is that it increases the width of the wheelchair foot rest it may be fixed or movable it keeps the foot in neutral position it may increase the length of the wheelchair so that it affects the maneuverability of the wheelchair tilt bar 
it is the projection from the frame which is present in the back portion of the wheelchair it is used by the person who pushed the wheelchair by pushing down the tilt bar with the leg the wheelchair can be tilted backwards by lifting the caster up seat and backrest the seat and the backrest normally are made up of cushion sometimes metal and the canvas sitting may be made by depending on the economical status of the patient the cushion is used for the comfortability the height of the backrest can be increased for the paraplegic and the high level of spinal cord lesion patient measurement seat width 1 or 2 inches added with the width of the widest part of the buttocks seat height 2 inches added with the distance between the bottom of the heel to the popliteal area seat depth 2 inches added with the measurement taken from the popliteal area to the level of the buttocks backrest height 2 inches less than the distance between the inferior angle of the scapula and the inferior part of the buttocks arm rest height elbow is kept 90 degree flexed and the measurement is taken from the buttocks level to the elbow level the term goniometry is derived from the greek word gonia means angle and metron means measurement the instrument which is used to measure the joint range and joint position is called goniometer goniometer is used for determining the presence or absence of impairment establishing a diagnosis developing a prognosis treatment goals and plan of care evaluating progress or lack of progress towards rehabilitative goals modifying treatment motivating the subject doing research on effectiveness of specific therapeutic techniques or regimens range of motion amount of motion available at a joint is called the range of motion starting position should be in anatomical position while measuring the range of motion active range of motion active range of motion refers to the amount of joint motion attained by a subject during an assisted voluntarily passive range of motion passive range of motion is the amount of motion performed by an examiner procedure for measuring the range of motion the examiner must have the knowledge of recommended testing position alternative position stabilization required joint structure and function anatomical body landmarks instrument alignment types of goniometer universal goniometer most common type of goniometer in clinical setting made up of metal or plastic available in many size and shape it is used to measure the joint range of motion at almost all the joints of the body the body of universal goniometer consists of a full or a half circle the scale on the body measures from 0 to 130 degree 0 to 180 degree or 0 to 360 degree goniometer consists of two arm stationary arm and movable arm stationary arm is a part of the body and cannot be moved independently movable arm is attached to the fulcrum in the center of the body by a screw like device gravity dependent or pendulum goniometer gravity dependent goniometer also refer as inclinometer it use gravity's effect on the pointer and fluid level to measure the joint range the pendulum goniometer consists of 360 degree protractor with a weighted pointer hanging from the center of the protractor fluid or bubble goniometer It has a fluid filled circular chamber containing an air bubble electrogoniometer it is used in research to obtain dynamic joint measurement this goniometer are expensive and take time to collaborate accurately and attach to the subject more used in research than in clinical setting causes of limitation of joint range of motion soft tissue tightness soft tissue tightness like muscles ligaments capsule cartilage synovial membrane spasm or tightness causes the reduction of range of motion of the joint the soft tissue tightness may be due to prolonged immobilization of the joint injury around the joint diseases like osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis etc adhesion formation it reduces the range of motion of the joint lack of mobility of the joint leads to the reduction in flexibility if the joints are immobilized for the prolonged period it reduces the extensibility formation of the adhesion and the formation of soft tissue around the joint injuries or inflammation around the joint 
any injuries inflammatory condition and the joint diseases like osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis may cause severe pain around the joint as a result of pain patient may avoid performing the full range of motion sometimes due to fear of pain patient may not perform any movement so there will be reduction in the movement muscular weakness or inefficiency weakness or flexibility of the muscle limits the active range of motion tightness or spasticity of muscles limits or prevents both active and passive movement as the muscles antagonist to the movement are unable to relax cartilaginous or bony destruction the pain which arises may limit both active and passive movement and the articular surface will not slide easily upon one another bony obstruction such as in myositis ossification limits range in the direction of obstruction muscle bulk increase in the muscle bulk may cause the reduction of the active and passive range of motion for example For a common man the elbow flexion range of motion will be 0 to 125 degree or 0 to 135 degree but it is very much lower for the bodybuilders due to their huge biceps muscle bulk age the range of motion of the joint will be more in the infant and childhood due to the non fusion of the bones day by day the range of motion reduces with the age difference gender The range of motion may vary with the gender. For example, females will be having less hip extension and hyper hip flexion after 25 years, but the same is reversed in male. Generally, females will be having the more flexible, increased range of motion than the males.